Good afternoon. My name is Brandon LaMarche. I am a senior scientist at ACIA Biosciences. And uh, our talk today is going to be focused on immune cell function, but it's arranged in two separate parts. So I'm going to start off by speaking about uh, bispecific T cell engagers and the role they, they can play in promoting uh, T cell mediated killing of cancer cells. And then the second part of the talk will, um, or actually in this part, I'm going to uh, mention both the Novocyte and the Excelligence instruments that ACIA produces. And in the second part of the talk, um, Adriano Rossi and Callum Robb, both from U University of Edinburgh, will be speaking about characterization um, of neutrophil extracellular traps. So a quick overview of my, my section of the talk. I'm going to give a background about bispecific T cell engagers. And I'd um, like to ask the question about what an optimal assay would be for discovery and development of these types of therapeutics and immunotherapeutics in general. Um, I'll then talk about the Excelligence technology. I'm going to provide a lot of background about this so that you understand the nuts and bolts of how the assay works. And then collectively, these will serve as a foundation for actually looking at the, the data for a bite-mediated T-cell killing assay. So uh, when we look at a cancer cell that um, has acquired a number of mutations, there's the potential for those to be displayed on the cell surface via MHC1. And these neoantigens um, can potentially uh, encounter a T-cell receptor. If that receptor has high affinity for that, of course, it'll lead to um, activation of that T-cell proliferation, the production of cytokines, the production of um, effector molecules such as perforin and granzyme, and it's those effector molecules which will then mediate the induction of ap apoptosis in that cancer cell. But we know that cancer cells have a number of means of evading this type of surveillance, and one of those is simply the downregulation of MHC1 expression. So in this situation, the neoantigen is no longer going to be displayed on the cancer cell surface, and in this case, the T cell receptor is not able to do its job in terms of surveillance. And so an important and interesting question is, is in these situations, are there ways that we can engineer an approach that would allow for you to elicit a robust, specific T cell response, even when the, the T cell receptor is not functioning? And so one of the methods that you can use for, for achieving this is the use of a bispecific T cell engager. These are bifunctional molecules. Each half of the molecule is a single chain antibody. And um, one half of the molecule has been designed to bind to CD3, a co-receptor on the T cell. And the other side of the molecule can be engineered to bind to any antigen of interest. So for example, if you're interested in targeting breast cancer cells, you could engineer uh, this, this particular uh, single chain antibody to bind the HER2 protein as one example. And what you're hoping is by, by tethering these two cells uh, in close proximity to go ahead and stimulate the proliferation of the T cell and of course apoptosis in the cancer cell. So one question I'd like to consider is, um, in terms of discovery and development of novel bites, what is the ideal assay? Like what's the perfect assay for, for developing these? Of course, there are many available, but if you look at one end of the spectrum, you have animal models, okay, whole organism systems. And these are essential, but they also have a number of problems. They're expensive and time consuming and also they're not always predictive. Any one of us can rattle off a number of examples where a therapy developed in mice that was very effective once brought into humans doesn't translate at all, okay? Now, hopefully over time, that'll become less and less of an issue, but nonetheless, it's a big deal right now. At the other end of the spectrum, you have biochemical or biophysical characterization assays. One example would be simply taking purified bite uh, molecule and looking for its affinity against the antigen of interest. So, uh, maybe through BIACOR or calorimetry or, or, or techniques um, like this. And of course, the problem is that simply finding a tight binder doesn't ensure that that molecule is going to um, be an effective cell killer. And so there's the challenge there, again, of predictivity. And so I think that sort of the middle of the road approach is, is my personal favorite in terms of development of, of these novel types of therapeutics. So you have the ability to control the uh, target cell and the effector cell and the effector molecules, and you get to look at bona fide cell killing rather than some surrogate of cell killing like a biomarker and it's, you know, perhaps it's phosphorylation or, or whatever it may be. So the question then would be, well, what does the ideal cell-based assay look like for the development of a therapeu uh, an immunotherapeutic like a bite? Obviously what we want is predictivity. You want the in vitro results to be reflective of what's going on in vivo. 
as much as possible. And so you'd like the assay to be as physiologically relevant as possible. And along those lines, you'd like it to be label free. Uh, I can list a number of examples where companies sell the technology that they claim does not interfere with the bi biology, but in fact, the labeling process doesn't, it does in fact perturb it. And so um, if you can get away with it, you'd like it to be label free. You'd also like it to be quantitative. In the ideal situation, you'd like to be able to generate something like an IC50 value, which will allow you to quantitatively compare uh, different constructs or different conditions. Also, you'd like it to, the, the workflow to be as simple as possible. If, if at all possible, you'd like it to be automated and for it to also be high throughput. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you that a, a technology that ACA makes called the Excelligence Real-Time Cell Analysis Instrument uh, meets all these criteria. And the best way to introduce this uh, uh, instrument is to really start with the micro titer plates that this instrument uses. So they have the same dimensions as any micro titer plate that, you, that you're used to. But the difference is that, as you can see here, there are actually electrodes in the bottom of these. So these electrodes are integrated into the bottom of each well of the plate. And I'll speak more in a minute about how those actually work. But in short, you put your cells into these plates. The plates go into the instrument and the instrument sits inside a standard tissue culture incubator. So you can control the temperature, the humidity, and the atmospheric composition as you would in any other assay that you run. Um, the instrument then interfaces with a computer, uh, which you program your experiment in, it acquires the data in real time, and then you do your analysis here as well. So the best way to understand what Excelligence is monitoring is to zoom into a single well in one of these electronic plates I'm showing the well here immersed in media. And as I said, there are gold electrodes integrated into the bottom of these. When the plate gets set inside the Excelligence instrument, a very weak electric potential is applied across the bottom of the plate. And this causes, for, uh, this causes a current to flow from one electrode to the next. Electrons are literally hopping from one electrode to the next. They're passing through bulk solution. And this measurement made in the absence of cells serves as the background for the assay. Of course, we want to study cells, and so once you've added them to the plate and they've deposited it onto the bottom, uh, this is a much different situation. These cells now are taking up some of the surface area on those electrodes, and the cells can conduct electricity, but they do so much more poorly than the surrounding medium. And so this causes there to be an inherent resistance or impedance to current flow through this system. And that's what the Excelligence system is monitoring, is how hard it has to work in order to maintain a constant current flow. So in terms of uh, the, the key features of the system, it's as simple as it could be. You're adding your cells to the plate, and you're putting the plate in the instrument, and you're hitting start. You can use standard tissue culture media. Um, it's a label-free situation. So again, trying to maintain as much physiological relevance as possible. Adhesion and growth on these electrodes is normal. We've done side-by-side -side assays, proliferation. There really is no difference between a standard tissue culture plastic and these plates. And another important point is that the cells are unaffected by the electric potential that they're, they're um, resting in. It's very weak, it's around 22 millivolts, and so this is actually below the resting potential of voltage-gated channels if you happen to be looking at a cell that has them. There's a very flexible assay window. You can acquire data anywhere from minutes to days or weeks. The technology doesn't limit your assay window. What does is uh, the biology that you're trying to measure. And finally, um, this, uh, the Excelligence assay does not wreck the cells that you're trying to monitor. So when you're done acquiring data through Excelligence, it's easy to collect the cells and then go analyze them by Western, do RNA sequencing, whatever it is that you're interested in. And the system acquires data in real time. So I'll hit on this over and over again over the course of this talk. Um, at the end of the day, what we plot is a parameter called cell index. And this is simply the impedance uh, taken at whatever time point you're interested in, subtracting out the impedance at t equals 0, that is, um, prior to adding the cells. <clears throat> So uh, what I just showed you is actually a simplification. Um, there are actually uh, an array of electrodes that are interdigitated. And this allows for you to um, cover about 75% of the plate bottom with electrodes. And the benefit of that is that you can monitor thousands of cells simultaneously, so it's very sensitive. Um, this is a photograph looking down inside at one of the 96 wells, uh, or a well in a 96 well plate. You can see a window here that allows for microscopy studies. So this is simply a bright field image and uh, immunofluorescence image. 
So the question is, is that's how it works, but what can you actually do with Excelligence? What can you monitor? Well, first off, you can monitor changes in cell number. It's a very easy thing to do. The, the total surface area being taken up here is very different than the case of a single cell, and so uh, you can track that. You can also look at changes in cell morphology or changes in how tightly the cell is interacting with the plate bottom. And the benefit of this is that there's a huge amount of biology that's encompassed by those three things. So if you want to look at ligand stimulation that results in cytoskeletal changes on the order of minutes, Excelligence can pick up on that. If you want to screen for drugs, cytotoxic drugs, Excelligence can do that. There's a huge variety of uh, things that it can do. Literally, there are dozens of assays. So how do we use this for uh, an immune cell killing assay? What does that look like? Um, in this particular case, I'm looking at solid uh, tumor cells that are naturally adherent. And um, you can go ahead and uh, add them to the plate. And of course, they're, they're going to adhere and proliferate to the point of confluence, at which point you get a, a plateau in the impedance signal. And the, and the beauty of this system is that um, uh, effector cells uh, are not naturally adherent. And so while they'll settle to the bottom of the plate, they're not going to form focal adhesions. And so there'll be a very minimal impedance signal associated with them. And so what it means is that you can now combine these two different types of cells. And in this combined system, you uh, are going to be selectively monitoring what's happening to the target cells by themselves. And so a hypothetical situation like this, as you titrate in more and more effector cells, you would expect for there to be uh, more cell killing, but also for the rate of that cell killing to, to increase. And so above and beyond this hypothetical curve, what I'm showing here is um, a, a real, real set of data. These are breast cancer cells that have been treated with NK92 cells. And what you see is that as you titrate in more of the effector cells, you get more and more of a, a robust response. It's very easy to validate that this drop in the impedance signal does in fact correlate with cell killing by any number of uh, techniques, whether it be immunofluorescence or Western blot or, or what have you. So what I want to do now is, in, in, in order to really analyze the, the, the bite-mediated uh, killing, uh, I want to look at a case that's a little bit different, and that's looking at liquid tumors. So in this case, we're looking at killing of uh, B-cell lymphomas. And um, you need a way to be able to do this so that the cell of interest, the target cell, is actually associated with the, the electrodes in the bottom of the plate. And so to do this, we, t we, t um, we coat the bottom of the plate with an antibody specific for the target cell of interest. In this case, we're using an anti-CD40. And this allows for, um, in this case, the Dowdy B-cell line to be uh, tethered along the plate bottom. And what we're then doing is adding in T-cells in the presence or absence of a bite. And we're asking whether this bite molecule facilitates killing by those T-cells. And so this is a control. Um, uh, what I'm showing here is um, green is when the plate bottom has not been coated with an anti-CD40 molecule. And what you see is that the Dowdy cells have a very minimal signal by themselves. But if the plate has been pre-coated with anti-CD40, uh, you see in red the proliferation to the point of confluence for those Dowdy cells. And so uh, that's the control. What does the actual data look like? What you can see here in the blue trace is the uh, Dowdy cells by themselves, sort of reaching a plateau. In red, we have Dowdy plus T cells. You, you do see some killing. In green, you have Dowdy plus T cells in the presence of a, um, an anti-CD19 antibody. This is sort of half of the bite molecule, and we've just used this as a control. You can see that it, it doesn't enhance killing at all. But of course, in purple, when a legitimate bite molecule is present that can bind both the T cell and the target cell, there's uh, an increased cell killing. So um, that's sort of the Excelligence assay in a nutshell for, how, for, for doing an immune cell killing assay. And uh, this is an example um, from a different uh, experiment, but what we've done here is we've simply titrated in increasing amounts of the bite. You see a very distinct um, uh, uh, dose response here. And um, I'll go through this quickly, but what I want to say is that you can use this data to generate percent cytolysis plots and plot percent cytolysis as a function of the bite molecule. And so you get these nice sigmoidal curves that allow for you to calculate um, an IC50 or an EC50 value. And something very important that I want to highlight is that we can do this assay with Excelligence side by side with another technique like flow cytometry. And what you'll see is that the results correlate very well with one another. 
This is something that's been borne out in the literature over and over again. Uh, it gives us a lot of confidence in the Excelligence assay as a means of generating quantitative information. And so what I've shown you now is um, basically a way to use Excelligence to really assess what's going on with the target cell. But you, you perhaps may in the same assay want to also look at what's going on with the cytokines that are produced or the effector molecules that have been produced. And so um, what I want to show you is just a way to combine the Excelligence assay, literally take the Excelligence plate, remove um, the media from the top of the, the, the well that you've just analyzed, and use that to go do a flow cytometry assay. And so in this particular example, we've used BioLegend's Legendplex, um, um, basically multiplex kit, to look at the different cytokines and effector molecules that are produced during this process. And we've analyzed them by the Novocyte flow cytometer, which is the, the cytometer that, that ACA makes. And um, I'm running short on time, so what I'll, what I'll just say very quickly is that uh, this instrument um, has four, four, four different lasers that are available. Uh, you get up to 13 fluorescence channels plus two scattering channels. A very flexible optical, optical platform that allows for you to interchange the lasers. Uh, you can add lasers later on if you wish to um, upgrade and increase your capacity. It's 10 to 7 dynamic range. If you want, you can fix the, the photomultipliers so that you're not constantly trying to gate the cells. It uses a volumetric syringe pump so that you don't actually have to use reference beads. You can get absolute cell counts. And then it also has a, a number of automated fluidics protocols that really make things quite simple. So for example, if it's Friday afternoon and you've just run an experiment, you simply push a button, the instrument will clean and sterilize itself, and you can just go home. You don't need to sit around and babysit it. Um, we've also developed our own software that's, that's been reviewed very well um, across the field. Um, it also has an auto sampler shown here, which takes a variety of uh, tubes and, and, and different uh, formats, including a 96-well plate. And so very quickly, what I'm going to show you here is um, uh, just uh, profiles from some of the different cytokines. The key, the key point here is that when dowdy cells have been treated with T cells in the presence of the um, CD19 bite, uh, the cytokine production is significantly enhanced relative to the other control scenarios. And the same is also true when you look at effector molecule production uh, as a whole. And so um, in summary, uh, for this part of the talk, you know, if you're doing a traditional cell killing assay, one of the things you can do is to monitor the effector cells themselves. Like you could look at perforin or granzyme secretion, you could look at cytokine production, or you know, perhaps signaling like phosphorylation pathways. But one of the problems is that these are obviously surrogates. These are not in themselves measuring cell killing efficiency. And at the end of the day, that's what immunotherapy is really about, is developing the, the, the best killers, the most specific and most efficient killers. And if that's the case, we really ought to be doing assays that monitor that directly. And so if you're monitoring what's happening with target cells, the basic assay is a release assay, where when the target cell gets lysed, its contents are spilled into the media, and you can analyze that. Um, one, one type of uh, analysis would be a um, chromium-51 or a fluorescent dye that's been added to the cell ahead of time. Um, alternatives are that you look at the release of endogenous biomolecules like LDH. But problems with these are, of course, that you're dealing with radioactivity or that there's a very short assay window in the case of chromium-51, um, four hours, maybe eight hours at most. In the Excelligence assay, you can run it for four days if you want without any problem at all. Another issue is uh, low sensitivity and poor signal to noise in many of these traditional assays. And so what I hope I've um, you know, shown you here is that with Excelligence, the workflow is extremely simple. Um, it's a label-free situation, very flexible assay window, very wide application, anything from cell invasion and migration to GPCR stimulation or, or drug screening applications. And then it gives you a complete picture of cell health and behavior because you're looking at a real-time trace. You're not trying to surmise what took place between two endpoints that you collected and are simply represented in a bar plot. Um, because it's non-invasive, you can easily do what I just showed you, and that's collect samples from the Excelligence plate and then use them in orthogonal assay. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank my colleagues at ACEA, uh, Fabio and Biao, who did a lot of the immunotherapy work that I've mentioned. And for the sake of time, uh, I'd like to, if there's maybe one or two questions, I'll answer those, but um, we'll then go ahead and pass the, uh, the mic over to the next speaker.